today we're talking about The Woods that's coming later this year to Weston, Massachusetts. Tell me a little bit about this venture, Brian. Um, I moved to Weston in 2018. I love the town. It is um, the beautiful nature, very close to, to the city. And I quickly noticed there was no um, restaurants in town. There's no uh, liquor consumption to the public. And um, I found it ironic that I was living in a dry town as somebody who runs a hospitality restaurant group. And as I started looking, um, it, it seems increasingly hard to find um, space here and to find any want for a liquor license until the town um, finished the, the development of the Josiah Smith Tavern. And they um, got a liquor license through a special legislation special legislation, and put out a request for proposal for restaurateurs to submit a bid for the uh, space and to be a tenant um, in the beautiful tavern. And I fell in love with the project from the moment I walked, walked through it. It's really beautiful. So, yeah, tell me more about this space uh, itself. Yeah, the Josiah Smith Tavern was built in the 1700s. Um, it's, a, it's right on Town Square. Um, George Washington stopped by there as he was marching the Revolutionary Army in 1775. Um, and it served um, alcohol to guests right up until the late 1800s until Prohibition started becoming a thing. <laughs> and uh, in the early 80s, the um, the building was in severe disrepair, uh, being on the town square. Um, the town really wanted to save it, so they purchased the building and then um, raised money and started renovating it. I think they started in 2016 and finished last year. And what else, other than being the first and only restaurant where they can get a drink at, what else can people expect from the woods and the experience that you're going to deliver there? Excellent. Yeah, we want to uh, be a farm and see a table restaurant. So we want to get a lot of um, our vegetables as locally sourced as possible. We're definitely trying to take on as many sustainable practices. Um, central to the kitchen, we'll have a wood fired grill and we're going to uh, donate and plant a tree for every tree we burn. Um, trying to be a better restaurant, more sustainable, more connected to the community. Um, you'll, we'll see three different dining room spaces all designed a little differently. You know, taking the charm of what is there and the historic elements, but giving it a nice, fresh, uh, modern feel. Where are we at in terms of the project and readying the woods? Yeah, so we want to be open by October 2024. So that's uh, fall harvest next year. Are you guys working on construction inside the building right now? Um, not swinging hammers construction, but I'm holding about three construction meetings a week. <laughs> so. Um, a lot of the development happens on, on, on computers and CAD. Basically, we so we need to make construction documents. Um, and once those construction documents are finalized and we get permitting from the town, once the permitting goes through, we start swinging hammers. Um, and then once we um, build the space out, we can uh, get a certificate of occupancy from the town, which allows, allows us to have um, guests in. And that's when the um, ABCC, the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission, releases the liquor license and, and you open. And are you also in the process still of developing the menu and what type of food offerings you'll have? Oh, absolutely. Yes. And uh, today I have a meeting with Landsake Farm. It's uh, the largest local farm in Weston um, because we want to use them as our primary uh, uh, vegetable supplier, uh, especially seasonally. So we, we basically want to go to them and let them tell us what they have in excess bounty that is fresh that week. And we're going to take that incorporate it into our seasonal menu. And you know, tell me a little bit more about the values that you hope to reflect in the business, because I know that you've mentioned sustainability and things that are locally sourced. So why is that important to you? Um, well, it's it's good for the planet. It's good for the community. Uh, being in the restaurant business, I've definitely struggled with how can we be more effective and more sustainable and more green in our practices. And I must say, uh, you know, over the years, I have taken steps, you know, from taking out all my Edison bulbs to putting in LED bulbs everywhere, you know, every step we can, making our to-go packaging, not plastic, you know, recycled cardboard. But here we have an opportunity to build a restaurant from ground up where we can select every piece of equipment. Um, we can, you know, really build systems that are better for the community, better for the environment. Um, Weston has a lot of wetland. And so it's very important how much water we take in and how much water we put out. Um, and that's one of the primary reasons. And I know that you mentioned too, that, you know, you, you saw opportunity, you know, with moving to Weston and noticing kind of a gap there in terms of what was offered to people. Uh, what do you overall in a broad sense hope to bring to Weston with 
this project? Yeah, good question. Um, all of my projects, uh, I think about the community first, even going back to D-Bar in 2005, uh, uh, what does the community in Dorchester need? And um, I really tried to assess who's there, who wants to go out. And, you know, I'm proud to say 18 years later, we're still a staple of the Dorchester community. And um, we did the same thing in the back bay with Duav. Um, everybody said, don't open on the other side of Mass Ave. You know, it's that's the bad side of Mass Ave. I was like, no, Boston's ready to open a nice fine dining restaurant on the other side of Mass Ave. And, you know, we've become a dining room for the community. People, people use us weekly, monthly for celebration. And being in Weston, uh, I hope to accomplish the same thing. A place where you can go with your family uh, weekly, a place you come to celebrate you know, on special occasions and holidays and really become a fabric of the community, um, a meeting house, a, a, a bar, restaurant, private event space, all of those things. As you do more of these, you know, this is obviously not your first rodeo. How does the process evolve for you personally and professionally putting together these restaurants, preparing them to open? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a tireless entrepreneur, so I love diving into the deep end of the pool and figuring out how to swim back. Um, so that's part of the challenge. Um, I really thrive in, a, 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 I'd like to say chaos, but it's, it's really an organized chaos. But it's really the team I have behind me, you know, the team of professionals um, already in my hospitality group that I can rely on not to just run things as I'm focusing on the growth, but also be there for the opening. The team of professionals, you know, also goes into um, my building side. Uh, my designer, Stephen Martak, is the third restaurant we've designed together. So to be able to work with him again and have have him in the um, building phase is incredible. So my lawyers, everything to just get it together. What's incredible about this um, is I'm working with the community. All my other deals have been with a landlord, a private landlord, uh, you know, and this is this is kind of the reverse. We're we're working with a town and a nonprofit to figure out how to make a business work. So it's actually been a little bit more joyful to talk with everybody uh, when you're having the conversations of what will work. Everybody's trying to come together to make it work.